Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport of Greco continues today. Dennis Hall, three-time Olympian, 10-time national champ, joins us from his offices in Amherst, Wisconsin. Dennis, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Scott. We're exploring what's going on in the world of Greco right now. And I thought, who better than to talk to the former head coach of our Northern Michigan program, a man who has been very well decorated for competition uh, here in the U.S. and around the world. Dennis, you and I have been friends for a long time. I remember the first time we actually met and spent time together was at the Dan Gable uh, National Wrestling Institute and Museum. And uh, you were inducted into the Hall of Fame. And quite frankly, I was so pleased that they finally got uh, to the point of recognizing you into that Hall of Fame. Uh, let's talk a bit about what's going on right now. Rob Herman recently named uh, Andy Besick to his staff up there at uh, Marquette. Um, what does that do for the program in your estimation? You know, it validates the program even more. Andy's a great guy, great competitor. Um, he knows how to win medals, and I think he's going to bring a level of intensity to the program that they need. And, uh, you know, having him in the room every day with the guys is is a great thing because he I know the way he had to train to win medals and he's going to instill that in the guys up there and hopefully keep producing more guys like himself we need to uh, get on a medal run uh, with Greco in the U.S. it's it's been too long since we've uh, got any medals at the world's or Olympics and you know hopefully uh, we can start producing more guys with guys going up to northern Andy Bisick was uh, named the 2016 Greco-Roman Wrestler of the Year. Much like you, he now has three of them, three straight. Yep. And uh, yep. <laughs> I think you're the only two to ever have done that. Probably. I don't know. I All I know is he deserved it, so I'm happy for him. We're talking with the former NMU coach, Dennis Hall. Dennis, you earned yours in 1994 through 96. You had a rather extensive career. Um, Andy is uh, not quite yet comfortable with the idea of, of retiring. Is it possible to be a great coach and a great competitor uh, and do the same, both of those things at the same time? I think so. You know, I mean, he could come back tomorrow if he wanted to. I, you know, I, I think he's got the skills and the mindset. He knows what to do, and it would be great to see him lead by example with the kids. You know, I, there's no doubt in my mind I think he could do both. Let's talk a little bit about um, <laughs> Ben Provisor. Can you break down Ben as a performer, as a competitor? guy hates to lose um he's finally figuring out you know what it takes to win and um we got him on a great strength training program and you know he's he's learning how to um figure this sport out because it is different than freestyle or folk style and you know it, it takes time to uh, figure out what you need to do to be successful in Greco, um, you know, it took uh, Bezik how long to figure out how to win world medals, too. So Ben's at the stage in his career where I expect medals the next three, four years and and uh, good things from him. Um, he's becoming a student of the sport. He's uh, asking all the right questions. And, and you know, we're, we're trying to get him to the point where he can win in the U.S., but he's not training to win in the U.S. He's training to win the world and Olympic medals. And and it's it's almost two different styles. You have to wrestle the American style when you're getting ready to make the team. And then you got to transfer over once you make the team to the international style. So that's what um, he's figuring out right now. And, you know, who knows what the uh, United World Wrestling will do with the Worlds coming up in August if they'll bring Parterre back before the Worlds. I'm tra we're training right now, uh, making sure that his Parterre is good just in case they do that. Let's talk about the 2017 World Team Trials. Ben Provisor against Joe Rao, our, our buddy at uh, Five Point Move, 5 p.m., if you will. Yeah. Uh, Timmy Hands uh, talked about how unique Ben Provisor's approach to, to training and preparation for the trials. Um, he chose, instead of 
uh, preparing with a room full of other Greco athletes, he, he chose to work with uh, collegian and freestyler Pat Downey, a guy that likes to uh, tweet. <laughs> yeah, let's, he does let's, for let's, sure. <laughs> let's let's talk about that. Was was that against advice, or did you embrace the idea? No, I, I embraced it. I know Downey uh, has mad good skills in freestyle. You know, he, he's a competitor. The guy hates to lose, and you know, we just needed a body up here that Ben could work with and felt comfortable working with. And you know, I encouraged him. You know, when Downey came up here the first time, you know, I saw they work great together and, you know, Ben was able to help him with things and, and, uh, Pat was able to help Ben. So it, it's a good relationship. They're training together. Ben's helping Pat get ready for the freestyle world team trials. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to get out of your, you know, what is the norm to put yourself in a good training situation. And that's where Ben's at. Ben just wants to be comfortable when he's training i think it perhaps opened up a door for uh you know a little bit more exploration of off balances uh being able to to follow it up and to create angles and and perhaps that's what downey provided uh for ben and maybe ben provided that for downey as well would you say that's true i i think it works both ways i think uh you know ben provided uh pat with uh good uh, upper body skills and then um Pat provided Ben with, you know, creating angles and always looking for angles and, and uh, level changes and that, that type of stuff. So it's a great working relationship. We're talking with one of the more respected coaches in the world of Greco. He is three-time Olympian, Dennis Hall. He's in the Nike hot seat today. Let's move on to Mason Manville. I asked uh, Andy Bisick if he's had a chance to work with him, and he has, but it's been some seven months ago. Um, there is some glimpses. There are some uh, uh, moments of absolute brilliance in Mason Manville's young career. Can you talk to us about what you're seeing in Mason Manville? You know, I see a guy that's always attacking, looking to score, wrestles kind of collegiately, almost similar to how I wrestled um, during my career, just getting the hands on guys, pulling on them, wearing them out, not afraid to change levels and attack. Um, you know, he's doing a great job. I uh, continues with Greco. Um, I know he's got supposedly, uh, not supposedly, but going to Penn State, and I, I hope he's able we're, we're talking with Dennis Hall. He is uh, one of the more recognized individuals in the world of, of uh, competitive Greco-Roman wrestling. The sport itself right now, Joe, is, is uh, or excuse me, Dennis Hall, uh, the sport is growing. Uh, we're seeing uh, another college adding it. It's no longer just Northern Michigan University and Marquette. Um, what can you tell us about uh, your feelings on the sport? Are, are we in a good place? No, nah, we're, we're not in a good place. I mean, you know, reality is, is we need 20 colleges having Greco Roman wrestling. And, you know, until we get that, we're, we'll all, we'll struggle for a while. But, you know, with uh, Kerry Regner bringing a program down there, it, it's a start. And, you know, hopefully we can get, you know, 10 more within the next five, five years. It, it, that program supported and does well, I think other colleges will be more on board to try something like that. So we got to get our Greco guys that, that we have in our states going down there, or, you know, up to northern and, and keeping those programs thriving because, you know, you, you can't do Greco two months out of the year. You got to train it year round if you want to be competitive. Despite the best efforts of those involved, Greco-Roman wrestling will not be featured at the second annual university duels. What did you make of that news? You know, it was troublesome. A anytime Greco's left out, uh, you had beat the streets uh, this week, and there was no Greco at that. And it it's just bothersome to me that, you know, we can't get our organizations in this country to support a, a program that that needs help you know, and opportunities for our athletes. That's, that's what we're missing. We're missing opportunities for the athletes. So, and I, I know Joe Russell uh, at George Mason, uh, his team at that point had been the only one signed up. Uh, and it seemed yeah. to be more of a facilities, uh, 
uh, issue as, as far as getting approval for the facility to make it a viable event. Uh, who, yeah. you know, it, it's, is the hiring of, of uh, uh, Gary Mayab going to help uh, facilitate growth in, in Greco? You know, I hope so. Gary Russell Greco himself, so he, he understands you know, it comes down to, you know, selling a program. We need medals consistently so more people want to do it. That's the bottom line. And the way you do it is by training your butt off and, and doing what you need to. So we got to just keep working with the athletes we got and make them as sharp as we can and, and hopefully bring home some medals over the next quad. So we're looking at college programs now in partnership with the NWCA uh, and uh, National Wrestling, Co excuse me, National College Wrestling, NCWA, and USA Wrestling, we're starting to see club programs being st installed, and specifically Greco programs being installed on college campuses around the country. What's your take on that? Is that a needed move? Yeah, I mean, I, anytime we can get Greco in a college room, it just widens your ability to... Um, have depth and weight classes because right now, you know, to be honest, you know, top eight after that, I mean, some weights are deep, but you know, freestyle, I mean, look at their national tournament, they have 40, 50 guys per weight class. And we at our nationals in Greco, you have 20, you know, if, if you're lucky. So we need more depth. And the only way we're going to do that is when colleges, um, see the benefit of Greco-Roman wrestling. We're talking with Dennis Hall. Of course, you can find Dennis online easy enough to do. Dennis Hall's World Gold. So look for worldgoldwrestling.com. It's there you're going to be able to find not only his bio, club information, camps and clinics. Um, are you still flying out and uh, doing Greco clinics around the country? Yeah, I am. I, you know, I had a Greco clinic, la clinic uh, last weekend in the town I live in, uh, Numbers were a little low with it being Mother Day, Mother's Day weekend, but, um, you know, the guys that came got got their money's worth. Uh, ben Provisor and I both put it on, and we were there both days. So it's nice. You know, I enjoy doing it anytime I can get in front of kids and teach what I love. It's a good day. You know, if, if I think back on your style, you had this. It was, first of all, the intensity was remarkable. Uh, and, and guys would try to emulate just that, the intensity, but you had something else going that refused to lose. If I can, if I can uh, use a gableism, uh, yeah. is that kind of thing that America really looked at when they saw you on the mat, man, it was almost, it wasn't a guarantee, guaranteed win, but there was yeah. a high probability of victory. And I don't know if there, you can ever see a guaranteed win. We saw Burroughs fall in Rio. Yep. Uh, so anything is possible in the sport of wrestling, but perhaps that gives us pause to think about how lucky we truly are that we get to compete in a sport we love. Would you say that's true? I, that's definitely true. I, I think, you know, the biggest thing is you got to you gotta realize your time's going to end some someday on a competitive mat. And, you know, when you're there – throw it all on the line and go out there and let the guys have it. Because, um, you know, without, if you're going out there and you're worried about winning, you're not, you're not thinking scoring. And I think a lot of times our athletes get in the, the mode of trying to win. And you know what? Expect to win when you step on a, on the mat, you put the work in, go out there and, and throw the kitchen sink at your opponent. And that hurts. And if that hurts. doesn't work, get the refrigerator. <laughs> it's a little bigger. And you know what, Dennis? I've seen guys your size pick up refrigerators and carry them. I yeah. actually watched a guy put a refrigerator on his shoulder. I saw this on YouTube. Picks up the refrigerator. I'm wondering where he's going. This is some Eastern yeah. Bloc country. Puts it on his shoulder, a regulation size refrigerator. Yep. Gets on a bicycle. And rides down the street carrying the refrigerator, riding down the street on two wheels. That's good. That's strength. It's creative. Yep. <laughs> He's saving himself the cost of hiring two men in a truck. Exactly. <laughs> Hall of Famer Dennis 
Hall has been our guest. I appreciate you taking the time, Dennis. God bless. Uh, Thank best you, to your family, Scott. Man. Appreciate what you do. Oh, Thank you. A pleasure. Amherst, Wisconsin. That's where he's at. I'm in Des Moines, Iowa. Our special guest in the Nike hot seat today has been three-time Olympian, 10-time national champ, and a good buddy. Dennis Hall. Dennis, thank you. Thank you.